Hi, my name is Crystal Rock and I'm a professional pastry chef. I've been developing this recipe for gummy bears for years now. It's tried, true, and tested, and you will get an accurately dosed gummy bear if you follow my instructions. They're gonna taste great and they're gonna be shelf stable for up to a year. They're nice and bouncy like a Haribo gummy bear. Let's get started. To start the gummy bear recipe, I've added 141 grams of sugar into my pot. Next, I'm going to add 103 grams of glucose syrup. You can also use corn syrup as well. To handle the glucose syrup, I'm going to put my hands in some cold water and then go ahead and grab it. Next is 11 grams of sorbitol. This is an optional ingredient. You can replace this amount with just extra sugar. This will help with the um, firm bounciness of the gummy bears and make it closer to a commercial like Haribo style gummy bear. Next up, I'm going to add nine grams of either citric acid or tartic acid. Your choice. You can add a couple more grams as well if you like to increase the sourness but don't go too far or it'll make your gummies melty. I've added a little extra citric acid to ours and we'll make sour gummies today. Next up, I have sheet gelatin. This is gold leaf sheet gelatin. We're gonna add 44 grams to my little measuring cup here. I like to bend it up, separate the gelatin, this maybe isn't necessary, but I do find it um, hydrates best in the water if I separate each individual sheet. To hydrate the gelatin, we are going to want to use some really cold water. I have in the past used tap water when my taps did get cold enough, but where I live now, I don't find that it is cold enough. You can always add an ice cube to tap water as well. And we're gonna leave that to bloom for a few moments. While I'm waiting for the gelatin to bloom, I've turned my heat on medium and I'm going to stir my sugar, glucose, and sorbitol. I'm gonna wait for this to melt, keeping a close eye on it. Our sugars are starting to melt here. I'm just gonna continue to stir and probably turn down the heat a little bit to a medium low now that everything is getting melty. By now our gelatin should be just about hydrated. Got my gelatin here. We're gonna just squeeze out all of the excess water. This is exactly what we're looking for. Everything is melted and homogenous, but there is no caramelization happening. So now I'm going to add the gelatin. At this point, I'm going to turn off the heat. Now it's time to add the preservative. I have the Loran Oils Mold Inhibitor. Usage direction is two, te two teaspoons per five pounds of candy. So we're gonna add a half a teaspoon and that will definitely cover our preserving needs. When you're stirring this mixture, you don't want to stir too vigorously. You want to create as little bubbles as possible, as we are going to remove those bubbles to have nice clear gummies. I've let this sit on the burner with the heat turned off to settle and for all the bubbles to come to the surface while I gathered all of my other ingredients. Now I'm going to skim the bubbles off.
I'm going to leave the rest on there and we will skim the individual cups once I have flavored them and they've cooled. I'm going to weigh out about 88 grams, 86 to 88 grams in each of these measuring cups. Every batch does tend to vary a little bit just because it is a variable on how much the gelatin will absorb. So I've added about 80 grams to each one of these cups. When I got to the last one, it was a little bit short, so I just took a little bit from each one of the cups to make up the difference and even them out. Now I'm gonna add my flavors and colors. Just a tiny little bit will do. I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon of flavor oil to each one of these. So we've got all our flavors and colors in these. I'm gonna cover them with plastic wrap and let them sit for at least 30 minutes. I find that they pipe best when the bubbles have risen to the surface and have been removed. It will be less sticky that way. My gummies have been sitting for a little while. They're quite solid now. I'm gonna throw this in the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds just to melt it. Nice and perfectly melted here. We don't want to overheat it as it will um, expand and bubble. This is perfect consistency to remove the bubbles on the top. Just got a spoon here and I'm just gonna very gently skim off the foamy top. I'm using a two-point scale to measure out my distillate. This is a really important step. You will not get any sort of accurate dosage using a one point scale or a gram scale. Um, my scale is American Way Scales from Amazon. It's pretty affordable. It won't last a lifetime, but it'll get the job done. My little chunks there of distillate. I like to freeze my distillate. It is easier to portion that way, but if it comes in a syringe or a little pot, then that's gonna make it really easy for you as well. I'm going to add just a very small touch of Everclear 95% alcohol to mine, really just like a few drops, and that's just gonna help dissolve the THC into the gummy mixture. It is not a necessary step. Now I'm going to throw this back into the microwave for about 10 seconds. Again, being really careful to ensure that I'm not overheating the mixture. So I've got my little dropper here. You can see my distillate is floating there and I'm gonna take from the opposite end where there isn't any distillate. And I'm just gonna throw some gummy mixture onto it to sink it so that way it's not going to stick to my dropper. And then we're just gonna stir, 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 stir until I cannot see it anymore. If it isn't dissolving well enough, you can definitely throw it back into the microwave for, you know, five second intervals until it is completely emulsified. I think I am going to do that with this one. That seems like it has done the trick. I have these gummy bear molds. I bought them in a four pack from Amazon. These work really excellently. Comes with a little dropper as well. I'm going to squish out absolutely all of the air in the little dropper head here. Then I'm going to stir my mixture. And then I'm gonna hold it inside the gummy mixture and release. And now just fill. You want to squeeze really gently, not only to get a nice even um, pour, but you want to avoid getting bubbles in your mixture. The more bubbles you have, the less accurate your gummy bears are going to become because it's um, going to incorporate more air into your gummy mixture. Therefore, by weight, your gummies will weigh different amounts.
Now that these are all done, we're going to throw this into the fridge for 12 to 24 hours until it has completely solidified. A little tip for picking up these trays when they are still full of warm gummies. You can of course just like leave it set aside until it's set up a little bit and then move it to the fridge. But I will grab either corner and just lift it this way. Let's go over a little bit of dosing math here um, in order to dose our gummy bears accurately. Um, I would prefer to use a concentrate purchased from a reputable store like a BC government cannabis store or one of my favorites, which is Sunrise Cannabis located on Kingsway here in Vancouver, BC. Let's assume that our concentrate is 99% pure THC. That would mean that there's 990 milligrams per gram of THC. Our goal is to make 50 gummy bears at 10 milligrams of THC each. So we will do 50 times 10 equals 500 milligrams total. That's the total amount we were adding to our batch. 500 divided by 990 equals 0 0.505 of a gram. So you could add 0.5 of a gram to your batch of gummy bears. And that would reasonably assume that you will have about 10 milligrams per gummy bear. I would just for loss add a little bit more. I like to add 0.55 to 0.6 of a gram as there will be gummy mixture that is sticking to the dropper, the measuring cup, um, spillage, it will just happen. It's been 24 hours now that my gummy bears have been sitting in the fridge. They're nice and firm and solidified now. You're gonna need for unmolding two bowls. In this bowl, I have about one cup of sugar and two teaspoons of citric acid. The citric acid is optional whether or not you want sour gummies. You can't add too much citric acid to it or it will melt down the gummies and they will become very, very wet and sticky. I have a second bowl here with a strainer in it. And then I have a sheet pan ready with some parchment paper. To unmold the gummy bears, I have a small bowl here with some food grade glycerin in it. I'm going to dip one of my fingers in. I just have a very small amount here and I'm gonna rub it on the rest of my fingers. You don't wanna have too much here or it's going to really moisten your gummy bears too much. And we're just gonna pull them out and you can see the glycerin is keeping them from sticking to my fingers throwing them in the bowl here so they're not in one big clump. I find I can't really put more than two trays of gummy bears in at one time before they start to become overcrowded and start becoming too wet. I'm going to sift out my gummy bears now. And that's it. Now I'm going to repeat the process with all of the different flavors. My gummy bears are all unmolded now and sugared. I'm going to set them aside now for 48 hours. I live in a humid climate, but if you live in a dry climate, you can probably dry them for 24 hours. As well, I'm also going to put a fan on them on low. Um, make sure your fan is clean and not dusty or doesn't have any pet hair on it. Otherwise, that's gonna blow right onto your gummy bears and nobody wants that. It's been 48 hours now since my bears have been drying. They are nice, perfectly dried now. They're not sticky at all, super easy to handle. And so you're gonna wanna package these in an airtight sealed container, maybe a glass jar or a Tupperware container if you want them to be mobile. I've purchased these bags off of Amazon. They're pretty affordable and they do the job really well. When using a bag like this, don't stuff the maximum amount into the bag make sure that you have room for some air. Without any air in there, your gummies are going to get really wet and sticky as they sit. So as long as you can shake it, you probably have enough air. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.